Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only Trent set of DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called, you know you want this. The ingredients you need is some Prosecco, a shot of Hennessy, a little bit of ginger ale, some ice. You're going to take all of those ingredients, shake it in a cocktail shaker, and strain it into a martini glass. I know those ingredients sound crazy put together, Hennessy and Prosecco, but it's really tasty with a little splash of that ginger ale. You know you want this. You know where I got that from? Um, low supplies at somebody's house and that's all they had. You try to make a cocktail. Have you where? ever seen baby boy? Yeah. When, he, when he's leaving, uh, not Yvette, the other girl that he was going to cheat on Yvette with and she worked with Yvette and she was like, you know, you want this. She was so mad that Jody did not fuck her. Girl, I'm thinking about the ingredients, not oh. <laughs> the name. Of the <laughs> dream. Oh my God. You got to taste oh, it. It's well- really good. Okay, welcome back to Cocktail Share Discussions, you guys. How was your week? My week has been very good. It's been productive. I've been waking up super early, and that is why I look so tired today. Because you know how some days you just be like, I'm tired, and I'm not getting cute, and I don't care. And when I start to work out, that's when it really starts to get me. I just be like, I'm going to be ugly all day, and I don't care. Say something. What? (laughs) (laughs) How was your week? (laughs) Um, so far, so good. Um, uh, if you see some pale little arms poking in the background, I'm babysitting, spending some time with um, my little cousin. He has come over to the Entrepreneur Academy of Higher Learning. Oh my God. And he, I'm so proud of him. Um, because my lessons have been paying off. He actually came up with a business idea today. And I thought, you know, for a five-year-old, it was pretty well thought out. Um, But other than that, I am doing okay. I was about to have a mini panic attack a little while ago because I realized, have you ever realized that you made like a huge mistake and it was too, it's too late to turn back? So it was like right before we got on, I had to restart the computer and everything else. And so as soon as I get off of here, I'm going to have to figure out how to fix it. But I, It'll be all right. That, you know, those blinks, those were blinks of stress that you just gave. You know, when, you re- when people really be blinking like that. I, one time, yeah. I was on my work computer. And a mm-hmm. lot of times on my work computer, if I have cocktail stuff to do, like post a video on YouTube, I'll download the video to my work computer. And so one day I had to send somebody a contract and I accidentally sent them the cocktails media kit. And I was like, I'm about to be fired. I'm about to be fired. I was like, but then you know how the little undo thing pops up? Girl. Girl, thank girl, God, because I wasn't there before. It wasn't there before. They just would have got it and been like, "Excuse me, who, what, what is, is this? this?" Yeah, so uh, th- that's what's going on right now. Um, anyway, um, uh, oh, make updates? sure you guys are subscribed to our Patreon. Remember, it's new bonus episodes every, every Monday. Monday. Um. I, when you hear this, who knows what the bonus episode will have been, but I'll just go ahead and play a clip (laughs) because I haven't recorded it yet. I decided I'm not going to suck your dick out here. That's rude. But what I wanted him to do was like, go see who was in my room. I was like, go see who's in my bed and whoever's in my bed, tell them if they not fucking, they need to get out. So he's like, okay. So (laughs) he comes to my room and, um, he like tried to wake the girl up who um who we had had sex with earlier and then the other friend that had went to the bathroom she had got in the bed too so it was like okay well both of you bitches cannot be in the bed both of you need to go so he comes back and he was like you know both of your friends are in the bed and i was like tell them to move like what the fuck so they're not moving and you know how when drunk people are asleep they're like so hard to move so i was like whatever fuck it so we're fucking in the living room right and i'm thinking that we are being um quiet and discreet and nobody will know y'all while my home girl woke up i guess she must have been thirsty because she was drunk and high as fuck she comes into the kitchen so the way that um that apartment was set up um, the kitchen and living room are together. It's like an open floor plan. So, sorry. 
Um, I said six minutes. Okay. So my homegirl comes out and she's coming to get some water. So she walks over. I see her out of the corner of my eye. So I was like, stop, stop. Cause we're like spooning. And that's how he's fucking me. So I'm just like, try- I don't know why. Like, drunk me is stupid because it's like I be thinking I can turn invisible, or I think that like if I'm real still, nobody is gonna pay attention, or maybe they don't see that my eyes are open. Like maybe they just won't pay attention. I don't know what was going through my head, but whatevs. So I'm laying on the couch, um, fucking this man. But I'm like, you need to stop. Like she's gonna see us, and I don't know why all of a sudden. <laughs> Okay, so um, this week we actually have a guest with us today. Let's welcome Melissa Felix. Hello. Hi, guys. Hey, (laughs) Melissa. Hey. So, you guys, Melissa is actually a very close family friend of mine. She's my sister's best friend, actually. Uh, We went through a lot of stress together uh, planning the (laughs) bachelorette party uh, and Mm -hmm. the wedding, and uh, we had to deal with a lot. But Melissa's here. She is a kindergarten teacher. She has POF. We will get into the details of what POF is um, right after we play a little game with you, Melissa. All right, let's go. So here on Cocktails, Kiki and I make up games. We just be thinking, going through crazy stuff, and then we just come up with games. So this game is called Rate That Date. So we're going to give you some date ideas, like this is what Bay is doing for you, and you're going to rate it from one to five, one being the worst, five being the best. You want to go first, Kiki? Okay. Um, First one, swimming in the fish tank at the Atlanta Aquarium with the whale sharks. Hmm. Um, I'm going to say a four. I, a I mean, four? So you're feeling that one. Yeah. You're like not? Adventure. No. I would give it a 10 if I could. I think that is so <laughs> cool. I've always wanted to do it. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have fun. <laughs> what would you give it? A two. I don't want to get in there with the whale sharks. No. Like, <laughs> things like that. They scare me. Skydiving, I'm scared of that. Oh. Um, never done it. The closest I could get to that is like the indoor skydiving. Um, other extreme things like do you know it how scary whale me. sharks are? No, I don't. <laughs> but I know <laughs> that it's a big tank of water and I probably have to sign a waiver. Like what if I die? I just think that the whale sharks need to be left alone. I'm a human. God put me on earth. That's where I belong. I can go swim just a little bit up at the top. I'm not trying to go down deep down. Mm -mm. That's not for me, but you know, more power to everybody else. I love seeing things and hearing about other people's experiences, but no, that's not the date for me. He wants to send me to, to the grave with a heart attack. If that's okay, what you Okay, okay. Next one. <laughs> Melissa. Bay mm-hmm. tells you to meet him at the studio. Um, you get there and you and him are going to create your very own mixtape. What would you rate that date? So, <laughs> uh, I would do a four. That's different. I like it. I'm really concerned about what you ladies would give a five. I give that a five. I think that is so much fun. And I want to print out the mixtape. I'm handing it out on the corner. Like, you know, print like the it? boys do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know, like, that's something that you have said that you wanted to do. Like, oh, I want to go record a song. I want to go record an album. I want to record those things. So that's fun for you. But I, I'm tone deaf. <laughs> I can't rap. I can't sing. <laughs> That's not. I mean, it's it's different, yeah. But it's like, um, not not for me. Um, now this one I can get with. Bay tells you the night before I'm coming to pick you up at four a.m. He takes you on a hot air balloon ride to watch the sunrise. Oh, that's a five. Yeah, I could give that one a five. I would be scared, but I could give that one a five. That would be fun. I have a basket around me and romantic. (laughs) Yeah. It is cute. Did y'all I'm know that there's gonna... a hot air balloon festival? Yes. I've been to it before yeah. on accident. I've I was, never I had been. A layover. Yeah. I, I didn't I like go, but I saw the balloons going from my hotel. I had a layover somewhere one day 
and I can't remember where it was, but it was beautiful. Um, Walker went and he invited me, but we were recording, so I didn't get to go. So next year, I need to see when it is because I want to go. I'm surprised they're still doing funny. it because I remember um, that horrible, horrible crash with the hot air balloons and the everybody. Because, you know, if you crash in a hot air balloon, that. everyone's dying because they put the propane tanks like right in the cart with you. And um, mm. there's no safe way to land. I'm actually going to give that one a, a three. Um, OK. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to give it a three. Uh, next okay. one. <laughs> OK. Melissa. Mm -hmm. Um. Bay tells you to get dressed. I want to mm -hmm. feed you, baby. He picks you up and takes you to Chili's. <laughs> um, I'm going to say a two. Okay. Because Chili's has really good queso. I really love it. Their, um, their Southwestern egg rolls are really good, too, with their ranch. Uh, oh, yeah, but I'm going to have to give good. it a one. I'm going to have to give him a, you tried me <laughs> because <laughs> what? Like, no, there I are some like chains that I like, but Chili's I'm going to have an attitude. Chili's is one of those ones you go to if you're in like a super country town and there's nothing else. Like there's no like other Nash option. Dish. Yeah. But it's, it's all like about that setup. Like if he's like doing all that extra telling me, oh, I'm really going to. And then Don't you're really not dressed. whining and dining. And you think That's whining really, and dining like is chilly. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I would go inside. I'd be like, sir, take first of all, I don't even like riding with niggas. I would rather like to meet you there. I'm leaving. So can you bring me out some egg rolls to go though? With a side of ranch. <laughs> Leave me alone. Leave me the hell alone. Please. Can you really look mad? I would be so offended. Like of all the places that you chose to tell me to get dressed and go to, that's somewhere you go in the airport because it's familiar when you're in a small airport. That's mm -hmm. somewhere where you're just going to pick up something to eat. That's not a, we made a plan. Does Chili's even take reservations? Mm -mm. There's no need no. to make a plan. And they give you your and tell me to get dressed. You get a buzzer. I'm yeah. Okay. Last <laughs> one. Right. This last date. Um, Netflix and chill and order in. One. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. It depends on if I feel like he's trying to Netflix and feel. Mm -hmm, or if mm -hmm. it really is going to be like a fun, like I've had fun night ends, nights mm -hmm. in with guys. And it's like, it doesn't turn into you just trying to get in my booty. Like, so if it was like that and it really was, he already ordered the food and it was set up cute and he picked the movie and we're having like a cute little movie night, I could give it a three. Uh, yeah. I could I could give it a three and he doesn't need to order it in advance because I need the food to be hot and right. Um, <laughs> food is very important to me. Um, I think that as long as it's not a first date, um, it's okay. Like, and have some movies picked out, have mm -hmm. some good stuff lined up. I don't mm -hmm. mind watching. I'm probably gonna fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's okay. Like sometimes doing chill stuff is okay. But again, don't tell me to get dressed unless you're about to help me take pictures for Instagram. I like that you said <laughs> have the movie picked out because one thing that I hate personally, even when I'm by myself, is how, when you get on Netflix and you start going through every category. You can't pick a movie, then you just turn it off and fall asleep. Yeah. Or you watch something stupid and it's just like. Yeah. And then there's something about picking out a movie with your significant other, especially if it's new, if it's like y'all are dating and you don't really know each other and then you're trying to, oh, have you seen this? No, I haven't seen it, but you really have seen it, but you just want to hurry up and pick a movie. Like, and you just, I, I get stressed him. and I start sweating. I saw this. I saw this. I saw this. <laughs> See, but then I start faking like I haven't seen some of them because it's like, we're going to be doing this all day. Like, mm. I always mm -hmm. go to Cabin Fever. I'm like, ooh, have you seen Cabin in the Woods? I think it's called Cabin in the Woods. And they're like, no. And I'm like, me neither. I've seen it 10 times. And I'm just like, let's watch Why it. Why did you pick that one? Is that one of your favorite movies? It's just a good, scary Netflix movie. It's like the the great, it's a good mixture of like corny and scary and good. So I'm just like, oh, you never seen it? Let's see it. I bet it's good. I've seen it. <laughs> Have the movie picked. <laughs> 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 yeah. And that is a good way to see like, okay, where's this going? Because yeah. sometimes if you like something that's just like super corny or just stupid, I'm going to second guess you. It's strange how we can judge each other off of like taste in movies, music, TV, yeah. but I'm definitely mm -hmm. judging. 
I'm definitely judging. And can you laugh or is everything just too uh, for you? Like sometimes you can laugh at a few corny things. Corny shit is funny sometimes. Mm Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that was it for our game. And before we get into the details of your life and what you're going through and who you are and all that good stuff, I want to tell you guys a quick, weird sex story. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. So this week's Weird Sex, um, this is another submission from you guys. You guys are making my job so much easier. Um, This story was posted online. I've seen it all over the place. Uh, This guy was trying to participate in an orgy and things went terribly, terribly wrong. So according to the New York Post, this um, this man, Kun Depp, who's 44, suddenly collapsed during an orgy in a hotel suite. His friends um, said that he took a woman upstairs. He had um, they, the investigators found him naked from the west down, waist down and dead. They said that they found beer, fried chicken, marathon rub, which um, is an erectile dysfunction cream, Viagra, whiskey bottles, and dried what? shrimp. What's he trying to do? <laughs> I don't it's, know. The, it's the naked from the waist down to me. It's something about well, seeing it was a an nigga orgy. A, I know, but it's something about just seeing a nigga in a t shirt like, and just you just running around like a toddler. <laughs> Take your shirt off. Right, I guess he only got to the point to get his pants down and he never got the shirt off. They said that they've done this before. Um, they thought that he was just taking a nap and he was worn out, but then they realized this dude ain't dead. breathing. So he was dead. R.I.P. Rest Maybe peace, slow down Khan. if you're going to go to an mm-hmm. orgy and don't use all of that stuff. Yeah, he was trying to go in too hard, y'all. Y'all don't have to do all that. Way too hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just pop a little taste vitamin. That'll <laughs> right. That'll, that'll do you good. <laughs> right. But that's it for Weird Sex. Remember, if you want to submit one of the stories that you found or you just you just heard about something and you want me to look into it, um, DM it to me at Kiki Said So or email it at info at Kiki Said So dot com. Um, all right, you guys, we have my very good friend Melissa here today. We're going to be talking about um POF. If you've never heard of POF before, it stands for premature ovarian Premature ovarian failure. One uh, percent of women get it before the age of forty, and um, Melissa is thirty-six, and you're basically going through menopause. So, tell our listeners a little bit about um, POF. So, um, yeah, so it's premature ovarian failure, and in a nutshell, you've lo- lost all your eggs. Um, you're no longer to um, carry a baby from. Um, your own eggs. Um, it does affect. It's the percentage is so small. So me getting it. Um, That's crazy. At this young of an age was just. Un, I was. I didn't know. I had no idea that it was coming. Um, I found out um, the end of August of this year, and. Mm what pushed me to do that is just like I my cycle started becoming irregular for the past two years my cycle was irregular Mm -hmm. um I was getting hot flashes I'm having like night sweats um where I'm having did you know it was a hot flash or were you just like oh I'm hot at first I was like I'm hot and then I would just be sitting and all of a sudden I'm talking to a friend and all of a sudden my face would start glistening, like just petals. And they were like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. And then underneath my nose would get all like hot with sweat bubbles. And I'm like, oh, what is going on? And then, um, then I found out they were hot flashes and mm-hmm. I tried to get on different like hormones to kind of like calm things down. Um, but when this was going on, you didn't know that you had POF. You didn't know that you wouldn't be able to have kids. You're just moving on through no. life. Like, 
Yeah, I just thought it was normal. And I had always, I've never had regular cycles. So I didn't mm. really think anything of it. In your um, whole life. Did you ever yeah. try to figure out what was going on earlier? Like when you were younger, or was it, was it something you just accepted? Well, when I was probably like about 25, mm -hmm. um, that's when my cycle started becoming really irregular. And I was like, and at that time I was a virgin. So mm -hmm. I, I was like, well, I can't be pregnant. So why is my cycle not, not coming? Like that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, and the doctors just kept telling me it was stress. So like how irregular was it? That's what I was going to ask, because when women say they have irregular cycles, I'm someone who I have my period every month, seven or eight days every month, the same day. So do you mean sometimes mm -hmm. it would be heavy? Sometimes it was not heavy or you mean just some months you would no, not. Sometimes it. it just wouldn't come. And then sometimes it would come, but it would be light, like like light, light, like you'd have to look under the light to see it. Um, oh, like wow. Barely pink. Um, and then most of the time I just wouldn't have a cycle. 100, 100 days, no cycle. Um, and again, the doctors would just say, oh, well, it's just stress. And I, I thought so, you know, I'm a teacher, stressful, okay. Mm -hmm. um, change my diet a little bit, eat some more green veggies and try to fix it. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until, um, you know, recently, like the last year, um, I went and I had uh, they put me on progesterone. The doctor that I was seeing put me on progesterone, and that was that was something that would make my cycle come, mm -hmm. and it and it would come. Um, but then maybe six months later, the progesterone would not work, or it stopped mm -hmm. working. So my cycle just stopped coming. And every doctor I went to continued to tell me the same thing. So I was just like, you know what? Forget it. So I went for a whole year. This is. 2019 without having a cycle um at all and then it wasn't until recently when i you know found out this news <laughs> so um what so, made so you didn't get your period for a year you go to the doctor because now you're at a point in life where you're trying to have a baby you mm -hmm. go to the doctor what do they tell you well i we did you know this is during covid so i call mm -hmm. we did the video chat Mm -hmm. And I was like, look, this is what everybody's been telling me. If you tell me the same thing, then I'm changing insurances and I'm just going to go find me another doctor because this is what it is. And so I told her what was going on. And she said, you know what? Everything that you're telling me and the fact that you've been trying to have a child um, is telling me that you need we need to go ahead and do some tests. And so she sent me in and I did a whole bunch of blood work. Um, to check all my different hormone levels to see what they were. And that's how we came to that conclusion. And she called me um, after doing all my blood work. And when I'm talking about blood work, we we're talking like 20 things of blood, like in one sitting. It was a lot of blood that they took out of me. Mm -hmm. And so she called me and she said, Melissa, I'm sorry to tell you this but you're not going to be able to have a child. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? She mm -hmm. said, you're, what you have just looking at your hormone level, she said, your estrogen level is super low. Um, your FSH, your follicle stimulant hormone is low. Basically every level that I need for, um, I'm sorry, that one was high. Every other, um, level mm -hmm. hormone I needed was was non-existent and um, she said you right now you basically have a body of a 50 year old woman and I was like oh my god and like wait what what do you mean I wasn't I really wasn't expecting that news I'm thinking that we're just going to do something that maybe I need to change my diet or take some something shots else. yeah take, something yeah, easily so fixable right and so she said you're not going to be able to have a baby and i said Wait, what do you mean there's nothing like like nothing at all and she was like no you you can't your your body your mind is saying your fsh is telling your body to go and yes pump out these eggs but your body is already it's done and she said had we known earlier um had we 
had you gotten gotten to me a couple of years ago, there's something maybe we could have tried different things. But at this point, you're at negative. You don't have anything. So Tell how did you, did you talk to those doctors? Did you call them? Because I would be like going off. It's nothing you can do now, but to know that Why you were concerned. To take, yeah. I feel like it was just like, oh, this is normal. Oh, okay. We'll just put you on these pills. And if this progesterone doesn't work, come back in six months and we'll put you on this other hormone treatment. And mm -hmm. if that doesn't work, there's one more hormone treatment we'll do. And if that doesn't work, then we'll do an ultrasound. Um, that's what I was told before meeting, you know, the doctor that gave me this news. And I mean, at the, at that time, yeah, I was livid. I was like mm -hmm. upset, didn't understand why, you know, nobody to know that it could have been something that we could have fixed or prevented. Um, and nobody told me anything. It was it was bad. <laughs> so what are some of the side effects that you get from POF? Um, <clears throat> well, there's obviously there's like you, the feeling of depression and loneliness and um, uh, going through all these different emotions um, at what one time um, is really is really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, along with um, just things happening to your body. So you're already going through, or some people may, I am already going through the menopausal stuff and trying to take different vitamins to regulate, you know, hot flashes. Mm -hmm. I had to go and do a DEXA scan to check and make sure I don't have osteoporosis and mm -hmm. different things. Um, sex is very difficult that's something else that <clears throat> what makes it difficult well one of the things that i deal with is vaginal dryness mm -hmm. so along with vaginal dryness and the pain that i feel when trying to um trying to get it in mm -hmm. um it's hurt. It hurts. Like it literally hurts to get, mm -hmm. even get the tip in um, really? to the point where I was like laying there and just tears crying down my face because it's like your body wants to, you want to, right? You want to feel this, you want to please this person. Mm -hmm. And my body is literally saying, no, I can't. Um, and so you have these things in your mind, but then your body is also physically in pain. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, have you tried any, t if, is it even like, if you try to do use like lubes or, or take, um, Kiki takes a vitamin called she orgasm and it, you know, it gets your juices flowing. Does that stuff work for your body or have you not tried it or would it still I've, not work? Yeah, I've tried, <laughs> um, a lot of things like Etsy has been my best friend. I've been like everything, finding different pills different um drinks and drink some hot chocolate um like well not just hot chocolate but like special hot chocolate that has uh -huh. some special herbs and stuff inside of it to get you going um and literally nothing um even like my my best friend's mom's like get some coconut oil and slather it up in there Mm -hmm. No, nope, it didn't work. work. Um, so I'm literally like I've been going to um, vaginal physical therapy, which I didn't even know was a thing. I didn't apparently either. as it is. And so I'm, you know, having this woman like stick her finger in and and do different type of movements and stuff to like make my body respond. Yeah. Is it yeah, working? To get it back to an orgasmic state. Is it working? Well, I haven't tried. Oh, mm -hmm. like tr you haven't tried to have sex or? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're She's laying there that in, it's the, gonna take a while. in mm -hmm. the vaginal therapy, is it awkward? Or do, like, when you first went, were yes. you like, do they have R&B music <laughs> playing? Like, do they have to set 
the mood. You know how when they have to like get dudes to jack off to come so they can yeah. donate this and they you can take a magazine in. I mean, I've always seen that in the movies, and I think that's what mm-hmm. they really do to get you going. Do they like set a, a mood, or is she just like no? Lay down? Like so, literally. So if you've ever been to physical therapy and you walk in and they got the balls going and you have all the equipment and everything else, mm-hmm. I'm thinking that. Because I looked it up. I Googled it. I was like, okay, well, how, how is this going to go? I'm thinking it stretches. But she took me into an, an, another room and closed the door like a, like a, like you're do, doing your pap smear almost. And mm-hmm. she's like, okay, you're going to do reach down, touch your toes, twist. You know, does this hurt? Does that hurt? Okay. Now she's leaving. She's going to, you know, leave a towel to cover you. Just take your bottoms off and you lay mm-hmm. down on the bed and she comes back and she puts her gloves on and then lathers her fingers up and open up your legs and stick her her finger and she's just wow. talking to you like this is just normal and I mm-hmm. it, it was just weird it was interesting mm-hmm. it was different I wasn't expecting it how um, often do you have to go but I'm supposed to be going once a week okay yeah. Wow. I I have never. How did you find the vaginal physical therapist? My gynecologist told me. She okay. referred me. Mm-hmm. Huh. What an interesting was... career path. It is an interesting career path. Because it's like, wow, you're just playing in pussies all day. I know some people who I think would be good at that. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I, I kind of just want to go for some practice. Like, can you teach Can me you unlock sport? a hidden area? Yeah, right? Like, they're going to be like, ma'am. I, I thought I was it. using it right, but just in case. <laughs> You're just coming in here just to play. Um, so do you even want to have sex? Like, or do you have to, so you have to go to that therapy? Do you also have to be like, dang, I really don't even have the urge. Right. So that's the thing, too, like that drive and desire isn't necessarily there. Mm -hmm. Um, But even with that, because, you know, in relationships, sex is is important, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But even with that, I've had to, like, take different pills or drink different teas or different natural products just to get my mind to, like, calm down and get in that mood. Yeah. Um, so that in itself is hard. And just feeling like you're not a woman. Like it feels like you put on go and I buy some more lingerie just to make myself feel good. But just with dealing with this, it's just kind of like, wow. I don't, I, it makes me feel not great, you know? Yeah. How does this affect your significant other? Is he understanding? Um, he's really supportive. Um, he understands that part. I think some of the harder things to deal with are like the moodiness, like one minute, everything's fine and everything's good. And I'm laughing. And then the next minute, something just triggers my mind to thinking about this. And I'm in, I'm in tears and I'm crying and I'm, and I'm, and that I'm not in a good place. And Mm -hmm. so that up and down roller coaster is something that, you know, is hard to to handle i'm sure have you talked to your like your family about this and your friends and what's their response so i have a really good support system um which i feel is like a blessing um because like when i first got the diagnosis i felt alone and i felt like being by myself i went through a dark time where i just wanted to like shut the walls down, like close the doors. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to do anything. I was just really, really in a dark place. Um, But my friends and my family kept calling and, hey, what's going on? Hey, let's, okay. Um, One of the things that my best friend told me was to start writing. Just, you know, write your feelings down, write your feelings down. And it wasn't until there's um, like a grant that I was trying to apply for to um, to pay for the IVF, mm-hmm. and it wasn't until my until I wrote my essay for this, you know, for the grant, mm-hmm. that I finally saw my words on paper. And once I saw the words on paper, it it was kind of freeing, but also it was hurtful because it was like I'm hearing myself 
on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, you know, everyone's been supportive. My best friend actually was like, you know what? Okay, I'm donating you my eggs and we're going to, you know, we're going to make it happen and don't worry. And I was like, okay, okay, this is good. But she's also pregnant right now. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, there's a process and a time frame that you have to do things. So she obviously can't donate her eggs. And mm -hmm. then we're like, okay, well, what else can we do? And then um, that's when we realized that there weren't many black women that donated eggs. Um, so then that was Which another. Which is really interesting. That's a whole other um, topic that we wanted to discuss with you. Why have you learned? Why is it that black women aren't donating their eggs? From different um, things that I've read and researched, mm -hmm. they say some of it is just like it's taboo or it can be thought of as taboo for black women to do it. Some mm -hmm. people say it's because of religious reasons and they don't believe in science to make a baby. Um, and then some it's just like maybe people just just don't know about it or the need or mm -hmm. the urgency for it. We don't really talk about it. I'd never heard of this before. Me neither. Um, I have. I can say something about that. I think that a large part of it is taboo. I tried to donate my eggs before and I found out that I have PCOS through the egg donation process. I didn't really tell a lot of people because the first person that I told was one of my friends. I told her that I was considering it. I was like, you know, one, the money was appealing to me, but two, it's like, I've never really wanted to have children, but I thought that I was healthy. And I was like, there's probably somebody out there who wants a kid. Like, this is a win-win thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna use these eggs. They're just dropping down the toilet every month let me donate my eggs so that somebody who actually wants to go through motherhood can. Everybody I told was against it. They were all telling really? me not to do it. Yes. They were like, oh, how would you feel if you had a kid running around that you're not taking care of? And I'm like, I hear you because biologically that's my kid, but it's not. Like, I don't even know anything about what's going on. The egg goes... I get some of it, but it's also such a personal decision. But everybody that I know was totally against it. And I don't even think that they even said, some of these people were very religious. They weren't even talking about religion. They just felt like it was not something to be done. And you just don't do that sort of thing, wow. which sucks because there are people out there who do want to have kids that look like them <coughs> and, and can't. Yeah. But yeah, very taboo. Um I that is wow. I I wish I would have known about donating eggs when I when I was younger and had a lot to give because mm -hmm. I I could see myself doing something like that. Like mm -hmm. to help somebody have that's sad that black women have to either what have a mixed baby or just find a little dark Spanish child. And yeah. You have to pretty much kind of settle with you know what's out there and have you considered adopting a baby instead or do you just really want to be pregnant <clears throat> it's definitely an option um mm -hmm. i'm i'm adopted myself so and our family has adopted many kids um throughout our family but mm -hmm. um so for me it would just be a a choice one of the final choices Okay. Um, because I do want to feel the connection. If I am, because we, after doing all the blood work, I went and did um, an ultrasound for my uterus mm -hmm. um, because the doctor wanted to see, well, is it even an option? Would you be able to, if you got an egg donor, would you be able to carry a baby? And since um, that turned out to be a positive, I'm like, well, if I can carry a baby, then that's what I want to do because that's mm -hmm. what my desire is. Mm -hmm. So what are the next steps? What is the, is this expensive? Yes. So it can really go from anywhere between the low end 10,000 to up to $65,000. Um, just for, and that's like after 65,000, 30,000 really with like your, the egg donations, the medicine, the treatment, the like everything that goes along with mm -hmm. it. Um, Does insurance help cover this? 
So some people's insurance does. There are some um, there are some businesses who women that um, are going through POF will specifically go to work at their businesses part time just because their insurance covers IVF. Mm-hmm. My insurance doesn't, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, and many insurances through research I've found many insurances are not covering IVF. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why, but I know that it sucks because it's like you now I'm giving you this money for my, you know, insurance purposes, but now mm-hmm. I'm being told that I, what I can't do with my body, basically. I mean, mm-hmm. who has $30,000 just sitting around, you know, mm-hmm. waiting? Um, so, so it's, it's hard, expensive. Yeah. So mm-hmm. where, where I, I know that in um, previous conversations, we've talked about you going to Barbados to have like the procedures done. Why Barbados? So um, one, it's way less expensive. Um, in Barbados, they don't charge uh, the ladies who donate their eggs are sp- strictly doing it voluntarily. Mm-hmm. Um, so that cuts down a lot of the cost. That's love. Um, so, yeah, so the cost is about, I mean, for what I need to do, it's about $14,000. How um, much do the donors get? Do you know, Kiki? If you are, I mean, so if you're going to give your... There, you can't. But, for example, I tried to do this, I think I was like 25-ish. Uh, they said you can't do it after 30. So, what they said here was that you could do it a total of five times. The first time you do it, it's about $6,000 that you get paid. You get $6,000 a check, plus all of your medical expenses and everything are taken mm-hmm. care of. So, all of my doctor's visits um, for the year are taken care of. Um, the hormone therapy that somebody like Melissa would be paying for, I'm mm-hmm. getting it for free. That's part of her cost. Um, you have to go through psych evaluations and all of this. So it started at um, about uh, $5,500, $6,000 for the first round, and it went up to almost $9,000. Um, wow. And it just increased every time. So you could do it up to five times, and then you know that's it for you. Mm-hmm. Wow. But yeah, and that was just at this specific place here in Atlanta. But I've seen people get up to like ten thousand dollars for um, one round. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when I was looking before I found Barbados, if the egg donors have were known donors, like they their cycles, pro, you know, produced a baby or full had carried a baby to full term, they got more money. Um, there, oh, so there's like VIP donors, basically. <laughs> In a sense, yeah. yeah. The top tier. Wow. And yeah. it's so much work that you go through on both ends. It's like that's the incentive. They pay these these women more money. You have mm-hmm. given somebody this child, this healthy baby, no mm-hmm. problems. Now we see what your eggs can do. You, you move mm-hmm. up the rank. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know, I was thinking this last night, where do the eggs go? Where did your eggs go? Like, where That's do they go? That's what I want to know. I have no idea because my, because when you're on your cycle, it's like shedding, right? Your mm-hmm. are right. shedding. That's a great question. I have and no idea. I'm still trying to figure it out. Early opportunity to really get tested. You don't know if they were just like really small or if, or what. Mm-hmm. And so with POF, it is safe to say that your babies will not look like you. No, that's correct. So, and that's a, that's the, the hardest pill I think to swallow. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, because your child's not going to look like you and they're not going to have your features or, you know, any part of your identity, it's Mm -hmm. just not going to have both physically and mentally. And so that's, that's hard. So when you're looking at for an egg donor and you're trying to find someone who looks like you or same skin tone or kinky hair like you, or it's hard because the pickings are slim Mm -hmm. and it's sometimes a sense of, well, you just, 
you know, accept what's already there or or continue to, to wait. Um, and then for me, like when I was talking to the doctors in Barbados, with my age and with my ethnicity, they're saying like, if you can do it anytime, but your percentage of success is higher um, to go ahead and, and get it done now. Mm-hmm. Wow. So it's like the clock is ticking. It's like, it's time. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the thing is, you think about it when you're young, people are like, when you're going to have them kids, you're, you're about that age, you're about that age. But I really didn't know there was like a really, like, I'm not thinking in your thirties is about that age or, mm-hmm. you know, you need to make some decisions quickly before, before your mm-hmm. time actually runs out. Mm-hmm. We were just have, talking when about When you were that. younger, mm-hmm. When you were younger, like, I know you talked about, like, not having your period and it being irregular and stuff, but did you ever have any pregnancy scares? Like, did you ever have, like, and this is super personal, like, you but, just like, somebody come inside of you. Yeah, you're like, I know I'm going to be pregnant, but, like, and you didn't yeah. know what was going on. Okay. Yeah, I've had those, um, or I'd go and get a plan B. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. But, it, but I didn't know if it was positive. really, I don't and who knows if even then, when it was when that happened, if it really wasn't gonna it was a possibility, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Melissa, how do you feel about being around friends who are pregnant? Mm-hmm. Well, I my best friend is pregnant, and ironically, I I don't feel like bad or anything like that. I think I get the most emotional and the hardest times for me are when I see actually see strangers with their kids Mm -hmm. Um, or when I'm sitting in front of my computer and I'm teaching my kindergartners. And like, for instance, there was one time that we were we were doing a writing assignment and they had to draw a heart and then they had inside the heart. They had to write everything they loved and write everyone they loved. And Mm -hmm. I literally had to turn the screen off because I was thinking about, and of course this was like early, you know, in my finding, but I was literally thinking about, you know, what I didn't have and what was, Mm. what I felt was stolen and taken from me. And so you sit and you're like teaching, this is like my seventh, eighth year teaching. And it's like, I'm taking care of everyone else's babies. I'm, teaching everyone's I'm pouring my heart my students call me mom at school all the time I'm their school mom I take them out on the weekend sometimes we meet up at the movies to watch you know different Disney movies and you know and then I'm not even going to be able to have my own Mm -hmm. um you know that would you know my own my own um it's hard Mm -hmm. that's hard to continue to take care of others but um yeah. So. How do you keep the hope? How do you how do you keep moving forward and and just keep that hope that one day you will be able to carry your baby and it might not look like you, but it will be your baby and you can teach it. It'll it'll have maybe some of your characteristics and take on some of your habits. How do you keep that hope? It's OK. I am, I'm just, I, I have, I have great friends and great family that are calling me every day and they're lifting me up and they're, you know, they're just right by my side and they're like, you know, it's going to happen. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Your GoFundMe, it's growing. It's going to grow, you know, Mm -hmm. keep telling your story because it's helpful for somebody else that, mm-hmm. you know, is sitting in silence, you know, and, and that's how I felt originally. I felt like I was just suffering, but in silence and um, having, having my friends and having my family call me and just continue to push me and continue to encourage me and, mm-hmm. okay, let's go look at the donors and let's see, okay, did you, check on them. Okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And my what ifs in my mind, my doubts of 
what if it doesn't happen or what if I'm not able to get it done or whatever like um I have people in my corner that are like you know what we're turning that negative energy back into positive mm -hmm. and it's going to happen we're not even going to doubt about it and um and uh and then just writing like I wrote um a, a poem or a letter to my to my baby you know mm -hmm. um and of you know just this journey and how hard it's been just to take it in my mind and 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 still keep moving forward because it's so it's hard it's hard to keep going forward with this in the back of my mind and things that I want to do but still mm -hmm. but still keep going but I know mm -hmm. as I continue to hear those voices in in my in my circle telling me you know it's going to happen I believe mm -hmm. it, I believe it, I believe it. And I truly believe it in my heart because mm -hmm. there's just no way that I, that it can't, you know, I just, I just have to have hope and I just have to believe and, and, and stay strong. Absolutely. We are can praying you, for you, Melissa. Can you tell everybody um, a little bit about the GoFundMe? You guys, I'm going to put, if you're watching the video, I'll put the link on the screen. If you're listening, the link is going to be in the description box to help Melissa. But let everybody know what it's for so that they can go ahead and contribute. So um, I created the GoFundMe just to help with um, the cost, the cost of um, IVF and the mm -hmm. whole procedure itself. Um, it's uh, $14,000 um, and it's for the medicine. It's for the, it's completely for all of the IVF. Luckily, uh, luckily I'm able to, you know, make travel arrangements and all that stuff. I can handle that. Um, but so this is for medicine, me maybe some for, doctor's appointments, um, the whatever has to happen in Barbados, this is for everything for IVF because your insurance does not cover it. Correct. This is okay. all for the medical side of things um, to bring this baby miracle along. So, yeah. Well, Melissa, we are going to take a quick break and go to Indecisive Diane. When we come back, we will read some advice letters. You'll help us give advice and then we will um, share some cocktails. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Hey, ladies, it's Diane. I feel like I'm getting more and more decisive. I'm just kidding. It still takes me hours to figure out what I want to eat. So here's a place called 8 Sushi Lounge. 930 Howell Mill Road is the address. They open at 1130. They close at 230. But they reopen at 5 p.m. and close at 10. Go there on a sexy date. A man who knows how to dress. Bye, ladies. All right, guys. And we are back. So um, it's time for advice. Remember, if you would like to ask us some questions, you can send it to us at askcocktails at gmail.com and maybe we will read it on the show. Okay, so I have one pulled up and it says, long ago episode 181, Dream Lover, Come See Me. I remember writing that title, but okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey ladies, you guys can call me B. I'm a little lost in my own mind. I'm a Virgo. I have been finding all the Virgos. I know she's going to be a mess like me. Okay. <laughs> so I can overthink a lot of things. This past year, I lost a sister in quotes. She's still here, but lost in hell alone. Oh, I Wait, thought she was. So is she dead or? No. Not they're, they're not, not fucking with each other. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought she was my bitch for life, knowing her for almost 11 years. But hey, what can I say? People come and go a lot these days. I was obviously still hurting about it, not really to the point to unblock her and ask her what's her problem. Uh, 
well, damn. She's a Capricorn, and this heifer never meets me halfway. I play the best friend down to the motherfucking boyfriend when the only thing I wanted was someone on my level to run the world with. I know it's crazy. To run what with? The world. Oh, but her okay. next sentence says, I know it's crazy to think the way that I do. That's literally what I was thinking. So yeah. I stopped fucking with her only because I'm sick of being that friend that thinks for the both of us, to be honest. I thought by now, since we are both in our mid-20s, I would have thought she would be on my level with goals we had in mind. But she still stays with her mom, um, with her boyfriend that's 32 years old with two kids. Sigh, I guess they're living the dream. We're both we both are on two different platforms, and I feel that's why I fell off from her. Yes, I did the cutting off. I'm just sick of doing everything when there is another brain in the room. Here and there, I think about it from time to time. Like, did I waste my years knowing this girl? Or is it just a lesson learned to know when people come into your life, always make sure they carry their 50%? What? I mean, down to my birthday. Like, I'm such a nice person. I've always given people chances every time. Now I'm to the point that my gloves are off. Call me selfish, bitchy, whatever. I really hate wasting my time, especially if it's on my time. I just want to know, should I keep my small group of friends that I have now and not worry about making new girlfriends? I've always clicked well with males more than females. Anyway, I just don't get it, to be honest. I just want that balance. And every time girls would DM me wanting to be friends just to play with you, and I don't have any time at all, please help SOS with advice. Um, I don't I got a lot to say <laughs> how to help you because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like I, they, it was everywhere. Like it's like I don't it's almost like you were saying you don't want to be the girl's friend because she's not on the same level as you. She lim like that's what it sounded like, and I never agree that's with what that. she said. Yeah, I, I, don't I don't really uh agree with that. So I don't really know what to say. I've never been the type of person to cut unless you're causing havoc in my life or or some type of uh, you're harming someone or you're doing me wrong. If you're just not there yet and you have had some struggles, you live with your mama and maybe you make dumb man choices. That's not really a reason for me to end our friendship, especially if I've known you for a long time and this is like a thick or thin situation. Like I really believe in that friendship through thick and thin. Thin is really thin sometimes. So I'm not, not going to fuck with you because you don't got your life together yet. I've been in some very low places. So I don't really know what you're talking about. And I'm really upset. You upsetting me and my homegirls. Yeah, you kind of upset me too, sis, because I'm... Okay, first of all, I was struggling to read the letter. But you're talking about this sister, this friend, as if y'all are coworkers and you're having to carry the work and both of y'all are getting paid the same amount of money. That's not what's happening. This is your friend. Sometimes people are going through things. Y'all are only in your mid-20s, first of all. Mm -hmm. her, okay, she's living with her mama. Give people time to sort things out. She may not have it figured out yet. You mm -hmm. don't. And even when you're 30 something, you could be 32 and think you have your life figured out. And then one day you realize I'm doing something that I hate. I'm not passionate mm -hmm. about this. I want to make a change. To me, it's never too late to make a change. And sometimes you have to go through uncomfortable situations to get on your feet. I don't mm -hmm. think you should be this girl's friend because I don't think that you're being a good friend to her. And that's just the truth from from what I could read. Um, mm -hmm. And you seem to be way too harsh and judgmental. So yes, I think that you're make, you're going crazy in your head and I get overthinking things, but I think you need to try to stop looking. It's almost as if you're looking at your friend as if she's supposed to help you get to another level. And because mm -hmm. you are trying to climb whatever you're trying to climb or get to wherever you're going, you want everybody else to be giving you something. Well, what are you giving her? Are you checking on her? Is she okay? She might Is not she be happy okay? about living with her boyfriend and somebody's mama and the kids either. But like, what are you doing to help? And if you're not going to be a friend to her and you're just worried about what she's not doing for you, sever ties permanently and yes. don't bother that lady unless you're going to be there to support her like have you ever said hey are you okay like what's going on what do you want to do is there mm -hmm. anything i can do to help like are you are you okay sometimes people I think people forget sometimes to ask someone that and don't come at her combatively. Just really ask, like, are you okay? Sometimes you just never know when somebody just is waiting to tell somebody and they feel like nobody cares. And from what you put in the email, it seemed like you don't care. 
at all. And if it that's not like how you feel, and you was just like, I don't want to deal with it. If that's how you feel, you need to check yourself for real because you're going to lose all well, your friends. Mm-hmm. What would you say? Ditto to all that. I'm wondering, <laughs> like, what is what does she describe as a friend? Like, what is a friendship mm-hmm. to her? Because maybe they have two different understandings of what a friend really True. is. Because yeah. she doesn't sound, she sounds like she needs a different type of friend. Mm-hmm. And it ain't that girl. It's not. That was really, that was mean. Okay, <laughs> next one. This one is titled Soy Sauce Balls. Oh, Lord. Hi, ladies. So I've been trying to get my husband to test out the soy sauce theory you guys mentioned in an older in an older podcast ever since I heard about it. I'm just a naturally curious person and was totally fascinated when I heard about it. Husband was not having it. I waited a while, <laughs> like four months, and just randomly asked if he would try it last night. And he shrugged and said, sure, whatever. So I immediately grabbed all the packets of soy sauce and I had, that I had stashed in the fridge and poured them into a little glass prep bowl, called that man into the room and told him to pull his pants down and get ready. He dipped them balls into the soy sauce for about five to 10 minutes and he couldn't taste anything. <laughs> A little, a little disappointed because I thought I would have been so it would have been so cool if it would have worked. He was less than thrilled about the experiment, so I have to make it up to him somehow tonight. LOL. I just had to share these findings with y'all. Love the show. That wasn't really an advice, <laughs> but you sent it. You meant to send that to the to the cocktails page, girl. But that's funny. It was that's maybe he needed to leave it him leave him in there a little longer. Girl, if y'all don't start playing with soy sauce and balls, soy sauce goes on fried rice, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all are silly this week. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so um, that's it for the advice. And now it is time for us to move on to um, the cocktails. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. The cocktails. Melissa, do you have a cocktail? I mean, it's a little something. Um, I remember going on a date with this guy. Mm-hmm. Well, a couple of dates. But the first date we went on, everything was good. We went to brunch. We were eating, laughing. Everything was fine. The next thing I know, he was gnawing on his on his knuckles like he was just what? chewing on him like, like a cannibal like <laughs> and making that sound and i was like <laughs> i'm going home i'm going home <laughs> what was wrong with him was he on drugs well i thought he was maybe nervous or something like maybe it was anxiety i don't know i just thought it was nervousness and i was like okay and i literally gave him a napkin like you want to it wipe off your knuckles. His knuckles was he bleeding? Were off. No, they were like red, like um, like with you know that hard stuff. I forget, but Scabs. it was red. Yeah, oh. like it was red, and like he's this is something normal, I guess, that he did. But I was like, "Are you okay?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm fine." And then put his hand <laughs> down, like <laughs> like it was normal. I'm like, okay, and but the guy was cute. And food was good, laughter, everything was good. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe he was just nervous. So we went on a, out on a second date. Same thing. Everything's fine. Everything's going great. Next thing you know. Like, I wonder if it was <laughs> itchy. <laughs> so was it itchy? Like, did he have a rash, like, athlete's hand? No, he does. It's just something he did. And like, even without even looking, even without him even gnawing on his hands, you could see like, that he gnaws on his hands. Like you could see like little, like his, like his heart, his hands are working hard, but it's really just his knuckles. But did you ask, I would need to know what's going on. I just asked him, I was like, are you okay? I'm going to look this up. And he Is said, this some yes, sort of condition? <laughs> and he would, and he didn't look embarrassed to be doing it? Not at all. 
he would just sit there and we were having a conversation. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Somebody had What would you a do dog. if you were on a date like that, Medina? I would be right. like I would be I'm scared. Gonna assume drugs. I, hard, hard drugs. And I, I mean, need to I go. would have to get to the bottom of it. It's not gonna be no, you just do this. What is going on? Can you call a family member? Because I need to know what's going on right now. Are you Hi, gonna mama. did he ever try to gnaw on your knuckles? <laughs> Imagine if he tried to eat your cootie cat. We're gonna be trying to chew it off. Okay. Like, oh, so you liked him step. besides well, him? I mean, he I... was cute. She said it like twice. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all hold hands? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I let him lick. <laughs> you yeah. let him what? I let him lick me, but I didn't let him touch my hands. That's for sure. We couldn't oh hold hands. God. But I mean, we're sitting literally at a bar and grill, and he's just, we're eating pizza. <laughs> like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> that is, cr- I mean, that, I've never heard of anything like that. I've Me heard some either. Weird stuff like that. I just crazy. thought he was nervous. No, he was. What if he really eats people and that's just his little snack? <laughs> what makes people not on there? Gnaw like I've got to know. Because this I've doesn't make sense. Before ever, never seen it before since then. After that, never either. How long did you deal with that man? Mm, we probably went on four or five dates. Wow. There's Dude. a name for it. What I had called? to Google it because this was bothering me. <laughs> Dermatophagia. It's um, a body focused repetitive behavior and it goes beyond just like nail biting or occasionally chewing on a finger, which who the hell is chewing on fingers? It's not a habit or a tick, but rather a disorder. And people people with this condition gnaw at and eat their skin, leaving it bloody, damaged and in some cases infected. Mm. But well, do they I wonder like what the way he can do tastes. about it. Like, I wonder, that's interesting. And like, I wonder when he was a baby, like if his mom breastfed him, was he tearing that nipple Ooh, up? Oh, I bet he was. <laughs> Whoa, can you that's cure crazy. this? <laughs> now I'm like falling down a black hole. Okay, I'll look <laughs> this up later because that is just crazy. Maybe next week that'll be weird sex. I'll have to, I'll have to update <laughs> you guys and let you know like what this is. I'm going to do some extensive research. Please and please, I want to know. Okay, I'll go next with my cocktail. And it's a very simple to the point cocktail. Um, So there is this guy that I met and we hung out the other night Mm -hmm. and um, I cooked for him for Veterans Day. I just wanted to say like, thank you. Yeah, he's not like my boyfriend or anything. I just met him, it's super new, but he's cool. I'm attracted to him and I think he's fun to spend time with. And I think he thinks the same about me. So, we cooked, we flirted, we had a bottle of wine. It was really fun and we kissed. And I'm always mm-hmm. super like, I love kissing. Like if you can kiss like me, I am just like in love because I feel like I am a kissing connoisseur. So I'm <laughs> like, dang, I hope that, you know, he kisses well. Cause if he doesn't, there's a, you know, I, there, there, I might not like you as much anymore. So mm-hmm. we lean in to kiss each other and it was like magic. There was like Disney sparks for lying. I was just like, oh my gosh, he did all the things that I do. He did the thumb trick. He nibbled. He was very soft and sensual, touched my face. I loved it. Touched my throat. Loved it. Well, we pull away from each other and he's like, why are my lips like numb and tingly? Well, Kiki told me about this lip gloss <laughs> on Buxom. <laughs> and I slathered it on you guys. The lip, start, the lip gloss is literally perfection. I saw her Isn't with it, it on last so time. Good? Like, this is cute. It's so good. And it's a lip plumping lip gloss. Mm-hmm. This man thought I had medicated stuff on my lips. He was like, what's going on? I'm like, no, 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 no. I was like, it's lip it's plump. This. It's this. Let like, me show I'm you. Showing- He's Googling what lip plump is to make, cause you know, it makes your lips tingly. It was hilarious. When he realized I really didn't have like a medicated thing on, he was like, okay. I mean, the sparks were gone instantly. He was like, what is going on with my lip plump? It was hilarious. I was like, please look it up. Here's the lip gloss. I had it in my bag. I showed it to him. I was like, it's lip plump. I forgot I had it on. <sighs> oh my God. You know what? As long as I have been wearing that lip gloss, that has never happened to me. I don't know if they just... <laughs> Makes me wonder, like, did you just not care? Highly possible. (laughs) Highly possible. Because usually I'll layer it on top so I don't put too much. Because it is very tingly. Especially, like, the first time you experience it, you're like, whoo, is this supposed to happen? 
very minty. Um, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I'll do a really short one. Mine's not funny or anything, really. I, um, the other night I had some edibles <laughs> and I don't know why I have this year, the year of quarantine, I have discovered that I really enjoy them. I need some that are very low dosage because I can't handle anything. So, um, I have a friend who he too is a veteran and I was going to go have sex with him and like, Give him some head for Veterans Day. That's the Happy gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Salute the troops, right? Um, but I brought some edibles over and we had the edibles first. Y'all, I don't know. I've had these a million times. I thought I was gonna have sex and I was just like, oh my God, I cannot breathe. Just hold me. I have to lay down. So I didn't do anything. The edibles got to me. I think I had that and I had a Coke. I haven't been drinking soda. So I had the edibles, I had a Coke and a cookie and it was just too much for my little heart, but not one to like fail. Um, when I woke up in the morning, I sucked his dick really, really good. We had amazing sex and I think he good cried this him. time. So <laughs> yeah, don't forget, you know, you got to look out yeah. for the soldiers. You do. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Those were some good cocktails. And they weren't too bad because I feel like my sister will listen to this episode as well as my mother. Wow. Um, uh, <laughs> Melissa, Ooh. before we head out and end this thing, let everyone mm -hmm. know where they can find you. And I also want you to be sure that you share whatever message you might want to share with other women dealing with POF. Mm -hmm. um, so my message is just... Um, to remember that you're not alone. Um, find a support system. If you don't have one, there's tons of Facebook groups um, that um, that have, you know, communities of women that are supporting one another. Um, and just know that, that it's going to be okay, that you can make it, that you don't have to suffer in silence, persevere in power, and, um, and just keep fighting the good fight. It'll be all right. Well, thanks again so much for sharing your story. Hopefully, you know, other women out there who are going through similar situations won't feel so alone. Um, and, you know, you guys, I would like to encourage you, if you're open to it, look into egg donation. Um, there's so many people out there who want it, and maybe you've never even considered it, but consider it, especially if like maybe you don't want to have kids or you know that you have healthy eggs. There's so many women out there. Um, you would be giving them such a great gift. So just consider it and make sure that you check out the links in the description box of this episode um, so that you can read more about Melissa's story. Hopefully you'll be able to donate or, you know, share it with somebody else who has the means to donate and help out. And um, with that being said, uh, remember to check us out on Instagram at Cocktails Podcast and also our Patreon, patreon.com slash cocktails. Um, I'm at Kiki Said So. And I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. And until next week, and you, guys. Next time, you guys. Bye. Goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Wait on the track.